Singapore is attempting the impossible, building the world's largest airport terminal while constructing an underground city deep beneath one of the world's smallest countries. Picture this a 1,080-hectare airport expansion in a nation where every square meter could decide its future, and a subterranean network of 18 kilometers of tunnels carved through soft soil, all to support 140 million travelers above ground. This isn't just an architectural stunt. It's a BET on survival in the face of relentless space limits, rewritten land laws, and challenges from global mega-airports. Why is Singapore risking so much? And what secrets beneath its surface could change the way cities are built forever? On a map, Singapore barely registers. A single red dot wedged at the tip of the Malay Peninsula, surrounded by far larger neighbors. The entire country covers just 709 square kilometers, less than half the size of Los Angeles. Yet within this tight boundary, more than 5.7 million people live, work, and compete for space. Every apartment block, every park, every stretch of highway has to justify its existence. There's no room for sprawl, no luxury of endless suburbs. Even the government's ambitious land reclamation, adding new ground by filling in the sea, has started to hit hard limits. Rising costs, environmental pushback, and regional disputes mean that simply making more land is no longer a reliable answer. The result? A level of urban pressure few cities will ever know. In Singapore, a single hectare can mean the difference between a new school and a new highway. Planners analyze every square meter, weighing trade-offs that would seem unthinkable elsewhere. The city's relentless density shapes daily life, from the height of its housing towers to the width of its sidewalks. This is a place where land isn't just valuable, it's existential. And that reality forces a new way of thinking. How do you build a future when you've run out of surface to build on? In 2015, Singapore rewrote the rule book on what it means to own land. Lawmakers passed a landmark amendment. From that point on, surface property rights would only extend to 30 meters below the Singapore height datum, everything deeper utility corridors, train lines, even entire caverns, belongs to the state. The logic was simple, but radical. Typical basements in Singapore rarely go deeper than 15 meters. By granting homeowners a generous zone for private use, but reserving the deeper layers for national infrastructure, the government unlocked a new dimension for city planning. This is vertical zoning, applied not just to skyscrapers, but to the very ground beneath the city. Now planners at the Urban Redevelopment Authority can map out entire bands of underground space, assigning each depth range a specific purpose. Transit tunnels might run at 30 to 40 meters. Utilities and storage can go even deeper, sometimes to 80 meters or more. To make this work, Singapore invested $188 million in underground technology research from digital mapping to advanced surveying. The legal framework even allows the government to acquire just a slice of underground space beneath a property without touching the surface above. With these tools, Singapore can coordinate massive projects like the Deep Tunnel Sewerage System or the upcoming Terminal 5 Tunnels without endless negotiations or legal battles over who owns what below ground. The city's legal and technical rewiring has turned the earth itself into a resource, opening up possibilities that simply didn't exist before. Terminal 5 isn't just an expansion. It's a city-scale project wedged into a footprint where every meter counts. Construction breaks ground in the first half of 2025, but the planning started years earlier, with teams poring over digital models and risk simulations. The numbers are staggering. 1,080 hectares of new airport district, a 140 hectare basement reaching down 28 meters, deep enough to swallow a five-story building. Phase one alone will handle 50 million passengers a year, with the full build-out targeting 140 million, more than any airport in Asia today. Jason Goh, the chief project director, 
calls it a radical re-engineering of airport design. After the COVID pause, his team rewrote the playbook. Modular construction, flexible zones, and dynamic scenario planning are now baked into every blueprint. Go's approach isn't just about adding gates, it's about future-proofing against the next disruption. Whether it's a pandemic or a surge in air travel nobody saw coming, what sets Terminal 5 apart isn't just its size, it's the 18 kilometers of underground tunnels threading beneath the tarmac, connecting all five terminals with automated people movers, baggage conveyors, and utility corridors. The entire system runs on a backbone of automation. Baggage glides through on autonomous tracks. Passengers move between terminals on driverless trains. Even immigration goes passport-free, with biometric scans replacing the old queues. Above ground, the world's largest airport solar array will power the equivalent of 20,000 homes, all of it engineered to fit inside a nation where land is measured in centimeters, not acres. 60 meters under Singapore, a hidden artery keeps the city alive. The Deep Tunnel Sewerage System, or DTSS, stretches 200 kilometers, longer than the entire island itself. Built in two phases, with the final stretch set to finish in 2025, this network collects and treats 800,000 cubic meters of wastewater every day. That's enough to fill more than 300 Olympic swimming pools daily. But the real trick isn't just moving sewage out of sight. By consolidating what used to be dozens of scattered treatment plants into a single deep system, Singapore freed up 150 hectares of surface land, prime real estate in a city where every hectare counts. The DTSS is more than a sewer. It's a utility superhighway, running beneath offices, malls, and even the new airport tunnels. Engineers designed it to double as a backbone for future infrastructure, power cables, fiber optics, even water pipes can piggyback on its route. Planning this kind of subterranean maze takes more than blueprints. Singapore invested $188 million in digital mapping and simulation, building a virtual twin of the underground city. Every pipe, cable, and tunnel is mapped in three dimensions. Using building information modeling and geographic information systems, Artificial intelligence crunches the data, predicting pinch points years in advance and rerouting utilities before a problem ever hits the surface. The payoff is measured in dollars and opportunity. Land that once held wastewater tanks now hosts homes, parks, or industry. Underground, the city's vital organs run side by side, coordinated by digital master plans that make chaos nearly impossible. In Singapore, invisible infrastructure is big business, and the return on investment is written right into the ground. Digging a new subway in Singapore isn't just a matter of laying rails and pouring concrete. Crews are tunneling up to 14 stories below ground, threading through a maze of existing lines, sewers, and skyscraper foundations. The plan calls for 113 new miles of MRT track by 2030 almost all of it underground. That means squeezing massive tunnel boring machines through soil that can shift from soft clay to hard granite in a matter of meters. One miscalculation and disaster strikes. In 2004, a retaining wall gave way at the Nicole Highway site, collapsing a section of road and killing four workers. The aftermath rewrote the rule book real-time geotechnical monitoring, stricter audits, and a new generation of TBMs designed for Singapore's unpredictable ground. For engineers on site, every meter forward is a test, and the lessons learned are written in steel and stone. Down in the tunnels, the work is relentless. Crews rotate through 12-hour shifts, their routines shaped by strict safety checklists and fatigue management plans. A foreman wipes sweat from his brow and glances at the clock. 30 minutes up on the surface for every few hours below is non-negotiable, especially since the rules tightened after the last big incident. It's not just about comfort. Underground, a missed break or a skipped drill can mean disaster. 
The pressure isn't only physical. There's a different kind of race unfolding above ground. Hong Kong's new third runway now pushes its annual capacity to 120 million. Bangkok just brought its third runway online in September 2024, chasing the same number. Every country in the region is building bigger, faster, higher. For the people digging and assembling Singapore's future, the competition is real. And so is the responsibility to get every detail right. Singapore, with just 709 square kilometers of land and 5.7 million residents, is building the world's largest airport terminal and a vast underground network. The Changi Terminal 5 project, starting in 2025, will add 1,080 hectares and boost annual capacity to 140 million passengers. Underground, over 200 kilometers of tunnels now free up 150 hectares of surface land, while rigorous safety rules and advanced technology aim to prevent tragedies like the 2004 Nicole Highway collapse. Yet, not all plans are public. Some infrastructure blueprints and long-term economic forecasts remain classified. As regional airports in Hong Kong and Bangkok race to expand, Singapore's approach stands out for its integration of law, engineering, and digital planning. The evidence shows that space constraints have forced radical solutions, turning policy, investment, and technical innovation into a global model for urban development. If Singapore can build up and down at this scale, it proves that the limits of land can be redefined by engineering and law.